Upon entering the town square, the party found that Piper's intervention into the love lives of two of the main shopkeeps in Brath had shut down most of the town's commerce. All that remained opened was the price-gouging produce stall run by a stern woman facing down an angry mob. Jeltar bought potatoes as Piper tried to use her performing skills to disperse the crowd with only moderate success. After returning to Tilly with potatoes and fleeing her wrath, the party set off to see Mayor Rolf, but was sent away to find his cousin's children in order to curry favor and gain an audience with him. They were directed towards the shipwrecked pirate ship known as the Ocean's Folly. Following the shore of the lake, the party finds the battered, waterlogged remains of the ghost ship. Clambering aboard, the champions made their way across the deck and down into the bowels of the ship. After a bit of exploration, the party discovered a whimpering sound and moved in to investigate it. Can I get features? Like, it's They're curled in a ball. It's really hard to tell. I talked to them in their head. What do you say in their head? Who are you and why are you in this bed? Sorry, what? You see the figure jump, the head slams against the, the top of the bed, oh. and you just hear, Oh! What? No! <laughs> and the, the figure just kind of curls up tighter and just squirms like, <laughs> into a farther corner away from you. I said, calm down, I'm here to help. What's your name? Do you say or do you telepathically... Telepathically. Into the... <laughs> telepathically. <clears throat> No more voices, no more voices, no more voices, no more voices, oh my God. no more voices. Kid, I say this now out loud. What's your name? You're not going to take me too. Well, we're kind of here, if you are who I think you are, we're here to rescue you and bring you back to your family. Where are you? At the foot of the bed. The, the, the face turns and you see this little boy, his eyes bloodshot red, tear streaks down his face. He's staring wildly in your direction, but as a human, cannot see you. Alright, um... Alright, right, right there. I go back to the door and get to everyone else. <laughs> I think I found the boy, at least. You found him. I will... Good. Go over to the bed... Kind of like crouch down. Carl? Yeah. Yes. How, how do you How do you know my name? Your family sent us to rescue you and your sister. Brian. And I like reach out my hand. Come on. He can't Bri see you. Brian, can I lift the bed? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, athletic check, <laughs> but. All right. I'm trying to trying like gently trying to coax him, and Craig's just like I'm all off the bed. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like by, you're by the side of the bed, and you like reach your hand under the boy can't see your hand. He, you can see him, but he yeah, can't see just... your hand. And then Craig walks over. Craig, make your roll, please. Working on it. Oh, that's not horrible. Uh, that's a eighteen. So just. Whoosh! The bed is gone, but you don't get a great grip on it because it's rotting wood. Uh -huh. So as you lift it over your head, it kind of overbalances and smashes against the wall. And it's this loud crunching noise of rotting wood just ripping apart. As this boy is now, like, horrified, like, pulls himself in the corner. What was that? What was that? What was that? I question it's, it's that okay. every day in my life. Hi, I'm Craig. <laughs> <sighs> I'm not sure if no one is picking up on this, but he can't see in the dark. Uh, no, I know. No, but... <laughs> uh. So, all of this is happening around this poor child who cannot see anything. <laughs> yeah, I go to the box. I forgot. I... Actually, no, I say this out loud. He can't see you. Alright. So... Light a torch. Go figure, humans can't see in the dark. Crazy. <laughs> I will take out the candle and I will light the candle. Alright, so you light the candle. I would like to point out... Wait a minute. ...that the demon-faced woman takes out a candle, lights it, and it's like that Are You Afraid of the Dark flashlight under the face. <laughs> demon woman horns, the kid just looks up, the eyes go wide. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ryan, can you just recap everything that just happened? Because I want to hear it in consecutive order. So what you guys basically just did 
Jill Terry walked in. Mind whammies the poor kid, who's in a haunted ghost ship, decided to mentally speak to him, freaked him out worse, returned to get people to try to coax the child out. Piper began to coax him. Craig got bored with this, smashed the bed over his own head across the wall, scratch his face palming, as Piper is like, oh right, he can't see us, and lights the candle in the most horrific way possible, that now he's seeing a flame and a demon's face floating in the darkness. First thing he's probably seen in a very long time. I mean, to And be fair. now he is freaking out as Jeltor walks over to the desk, shaking his head, and he's looking at this nice little box. I'm not shaking my head, I'm chuckling. I'm I'm really sorry. I just forgot that you can't see, and I I the the candle for you. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> I get my renown too, right? He doesn't know you. Oh right. Persuasion. That should be good. Twelve. He is freaking the fuck out. Oh. <laughs> He's just like horrified. <laughs> there is a gnome. A halfling, a tiefling, and a cat man surrounding him. Craig sees he's freaking out, so he goes over and gives him a hug. Okay, yeah. Oh, no. So you just now grapple this child who is now screaming and fight. I'm going to go to Jeltor for a second because I need a second away from this. <laughs> <laughs> Is the cat going to be as scary as the tiefling in this I'm situation? not sure. I mean, the kid's freaking out. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Dude, this is one self. So fast. So fast. So, Jeltor, you walk over to the desk, and there's this little box. It's not a full chest. It's a box. Uh, it's intricately carved, beautiful wood, has ivory inlay. And it doesn't and look worn. It doesn't look worn at all. It looks pristine. I want to investigate the box. Roll an investigation check. <laughs> that one boy gotta love these gotta love being a halfling. All right, twenty-two. Twenty-two. You don't know who made this box, like what race, what area of the world, but it was very well made, especially to survive this area, this environment. It is very well made. The box itself is probably worth 500 gold pieces on its own. And as you look at it, you open it up, and in the center, there seems to be a divot on both the top and bottom that would fit something, probably an orb of some type, would fit perfectly inside, almost like this box is meant to display something else. Okay. There's nothing else in it, though. There's nothing in it, though. There's nothing in it currently. Uh, any secret compartments? Uh, with your investigation check, you do not find any. Okay. But you do notice that the inside is silk. Okay, I guess I take the box and put it in a bag. Alright, so you take the box, you put it in the bag. And in the background, <laughs> you hear a screaming child <laughs> as you turn and see Craig just full-blown hugging this child, like restraining this child. As it's as he's just screaming his head Be off. Be gentle with him. He's a little. Craig, one. Craig, it's Craig, okay. let the boy go. It's okay. I kind of like petting his hair and everything. <laughs> shh, shh. You're like holding him, petting his head, going shh, shh, shh. It's okay. We're friends. The kid is <laughs> freaking Craig, out. Craig, Craig, let the kid go. Let let the kid go, Craig. He doesn't want hugs. Oh, I I just let him go. <laughs> The kid, like, backs against the wall, and you see by his feet, there is a hole in the floor. Uh, What's in I go the up hole? To, I go up to the hole. Um, he, as you walk, he goes, Don't go down there! Huh? What's down there? Ida went down there, and she never came back. So that's what your sister well, went. We're going to find her, too, okay? Don't hurt her! And we're he, like, he stands in front her. of the hole, like... He is terrified of you, and he's trying to block your oh. path through the hole. I put my arm on his kid's shoulder. Kid. We're he's going to jerk away from you immediately. 
Kid, we're here to help. If we wanted to hurt you, you wouldn't be standing here right now. <laughs> Make a persuasion at disadvantage. <laughs> you people should never work with children. <laughs> no. <laughs> we Five. <should. laughs> so... What you were saying is, like, if, if, if we wanted to hurt you, you would have been hurt already. What it came out as, if, as in his mind, sounded more like, we're going to kill you, and we can kill you. <laughs> How did he get that? <laughs> You're, there's, like, that, are you afraid of the dark lighting? You're carrying weapons. And, like, it's not that's well, my what My weapons you aren't said. drawn. I know, but you're carrying weapons. You're holding a desiccated rat's claw in your hand. No, it's right to my side. You're carrying a desiccated rat's uh, claw. I, Scratch, do you want the candle? For I him? walk over to the kid. Okay. And I tell him, calm down, boy. I'm not going to let them hurt you. And can I roll persuasion? Still disadvantage. You guys have freaked this kid out. Not trying to. <laughs> Uh, 15? <laughs> Let's see what he rolls. That's sort of a minus. He just kind of looks at you. The eyes are just enormous. And he flops into you going, Kitty! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He rolled really badly on that one. Wow. I think at this point... It is now canon. Scratch is good with kids. There you go. <laughs> I can't. I can't. You guys just get like threatening him and doing the most terrifying things possible. I'm, the I'm... giant fuzzy kitty walks up. It's okay, boy. <laughs> <laughs> the giant stuffed animal has made it all better. <laughs> that works for me. I'm no, gonna hug him again if this didn't work sobbing. out. He's just sobbing That's into right. your fur there, Scratch. Yeah. <laughs> so, the boy is just in Scratch's chest crying. Well, the boy is not tall enough to be in Scratch's chest. He's like against his thigh. I sit down and I, uh, I just, I comfort the child. Alright, so you spend a little time comforting the child. Uh, look at the, look at this hole that we saw. It seems to drop down to the next level through the floor. How far of a drop? As you hold the light out, probably about ten feet. Oh, just within my range of my candle. Hey, Brian. Yes? Can I do a cartwheel to try to, like, make the kid less scared? <laughs> or something, like, just being silly? Well, right now he's got his face buried in Scratch's fur, so he's probably not going to see it. You can cartwheel all you want. He's probably not going to see it. Oh, um, you know what? Yeah, I'll cartwheel until he looks. Yeah. yeah, he's just cartwheeling around the room. Just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> not a very large room. All right. He kind of does the cartwheel one way, hits the wall. Does the cartwheel the other way, hits the wall. Okay. Piper, you're in your head. I'm going to go on ahead and investigate further on, and I'll contact you when I get when I um, come back to the hole. The base of the hole. Okay. Be careful. So I try to jump down without hurting myself. Well, as you get closer, you see that there seems to be some kind of... Slide. It's not a rope. It's like oh. sheets have been tied together and are like... The, uh, there's a thick knot like near one of the splintered pieces of beam. So you can try to climb down that, or you can just jump down. You're not uh, sure which one's more dangerous. <laughs> uh, that thing, I'm pretty light. I'm a halfling. Uh, all right, let's let's just climb down the rope. All righty. So you're climbing down the rope. Make me an athletics check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one thing I'm good at. <laughs> yeah. Athletics. Yeah, man. I got a six. Total. Yeah, man. I'm so fucking good at that. Come on. You feel the 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 wood creaking, and you have that moment of, oh crap, this thing's about to go underneath me. Can I and you jump? pause for a moment. You pause for a moment. You're like waiting for the drop, and it doesn't come. So you slowly lower yourself down the rest of the way. Your feet touch wood, and you're like, oh, okay. 
Whew. And you are standing in an open area on a pile of debris. It's a staircase. It was a staircase going down. This is also filled. There's another staircase across the way that's fine, perfectly fine. And then there's a hall that goes down. The staircase that's fine goes down. Then there's another hallway, and you see four doors, two on either side. Mm, okay. I guess I'll start checking the doors. Yeah, I'll start checking right. the doors. Alright, so you start going down the hallway. There's one door to your left, one door to your right. Which one do you check? Let's go with the left one first. Alright, on the left, roll me in a perception check. Thirteen. You don't hear anything. I... Uh, is the door locked? You may roll an investigation. This will count for lock and trap. <laughs> uh, fourteen. <laughs> does not appear locked, nor does it appear trapped. Okay, I slowly open the door. Alright. It is a much more humble room than the captain's quarters, but is it has, still has a very nice looking bed, desk, and a trunk that seem worn down by time. And water damage, and though the lake itself is not salt water, the salty air that it had been around had worn it down a bit as well. There is a book on the desk, and there is a ring of keys hanging on a peg. You ring of keys? I take mm -hmm. the ring of keys. Alright, so you walk into the room and you grab the ring of keys. Uh. It's next to the desk. The ring of keys is hanging on a peg by the desk. Okay, uh, I check the desk for anything. Alright, you just find the notebook. There's uh, some papers, but they're waterlogged and illegible. Gotcha. I'll look underneath the bed. She just mean to say side. There's nothing under the bed. Alright. There is the trunk yeah, in front open of the it. bed. Yeah, I didn't open the trunk. It is locked. <sighs> Try to pick the lock. JJ, what are you holding? My... You're not holding anything in my hands. What did you just pick up? Oh, your keys. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to pick the lock. <laughs> I already rolled, right. Brian. Roll to pick the lock. I went from a nat 1 to an 18 on a die, so... Alright, so the lock unclicks, and you're like, haha, I got it. And then you realize, wait a minute, and you look at the keys hanging from your belt. Oh, yeah. So you open it up, and you find moldy clothing. And you're you're tenacious. You're sitting there going, there's got to be more than Why would you lock up clothing? So you start moving through, and you find a silver-handled rapier. It has the design of ivy leaves along the hilt. Wait, it's like... probably worth about 75 gold pieces. Similar to the box? No, the the uh, the box has a different inlay. The okay. the hilt of this blade has silver ivy leaves inlaid okay. in it. Okay. And it comes with a sheath. It, you note the blade is not silvered, but it's, it is still it's, a very, very nice looking yeah. rapier. I take it and put it on the uh, put it next to my other rapier. All right, so you have two rapiers hanging from your belt now, which might be a little weird. On the same side? Are you going full samurai on us? Yeah, I'm gonna put on the same side because I have my candle on the other side. Yeah, gotta <laughs> be careful. Oh, so how much time has passed since I used the candle? Since I lit the candle? Probably only about 20 minutes. Uh, so I have 38 minutes left on this candle. I'm gonna keep trying. Okay. All right. I see. All right, nothing else in this room. Well, Just the notebook on the table. I take the notebook, I guess, and put it in the bag. All right, take the notebook. I'll let someone, uh, I'll let Piper look at that. Notebook contents. Whatever you do, don't take the rapier. <laughs> Cursed rapier. I ain't attuned to it. <laughs> Just by touching this rapier, you will die in seven days. Oh, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Piper's working against the clock now. <laughs> <laughs> Only love's true kiss will save you. <laughs> Damn. I won't tell her about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll die. That'll show her. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's more that's more JJ than Joe Toy speaking now at that point though. <laughs> Alright, so I Love you too, baby. I leave the room and close the door back. Alright. Close the door behind you. I check the right side now. Alright. So give me a perception check. Same deal. Sixteen. Sixteen? 
you hear this shuffling noise and light moaning. Um, I creak open the door. Is wait, is the door locked? The door is not locked. I try to creak open the door and peek uh, in. Make a perception check. Despite my better intentions, <laughs> my better sense of judgment. Hyper. You said perception. <laughs> That is perception, yep. 19. You see... You realized something as you're looking into this room. This is a ghost ship. And not once have you come across a body. And now you know why. Because every body <laughs> is in here. And they are kind of... Give me a stealth check real quick. Oh. <laughs> um, 18 plus 7. All right. You push the door open lightly and you peek inside. They don't turn to notice you, but you can still see the outline of rotted flesh and the smell hits you in a nauseating wave as these zombies are shuffling around the room. You count nine of them. I close the door. Uh, another thing you would note is that this room is twice as long as the one you were just in. So that other door on the same side probably leads right back in here. This is the crew quarters. Gotcha. I close the door very slowly. <laughs> That's to not make, make any another noise. Another stealth check. That's to not make any noise. Uh, 14 plus 7 to 21. 21. All right. 21. They don't seem to notice. And uh, I go to the other side of the hallway. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and move along the wall quietly to the other door. Alrighty, make me a third stealth check. Oh my god. 17 plus 7. It says, yeah, I was gonna say, it's a zombie, dude. Let's be honest. Are I, you really going to fail against a zombie's perception? You'd be surprised, man. I would man. hope not. Like, all I need to do is roll two nat ones or a two. That is true. But you get to the other door. Oh man. Uh, I listened to that door. Alright, make me a perception check. No more fucking zombies, please. Uh, All 18. the zombies! 18. Alright, you don't hear anything coming from inside this room. Okay. I, 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 is it locked? Uh, that's an investigation. 16. 16? The door does not appear locked. Uh, the door does not appear locked, and it does not appear trapped. Alright, I open the door slowly and peek in. Alright. This room is filled with barrels and boxes and sacks of you don't know what does not smell good in here, but you get the feeling that this is a storage room that did not have much in the way of protection from the elements, so whatever was being stored in here, probably not good anymore. Alright, uh, I close that door, investigate that later, maybe, who knows. <laughs> This, this this nasty smell starting to get pretty disturbing. Yeah, you're getting the f that dead flesh smell coming from the other room, and it's not making you feel good. Fucking nine zombies, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> yeah, imagine if you just let Craig knock on that door. <sighs> I, I mean, we probably could just throw him in there and everything will be fine. He'll destroy them all, it's fine. You're not wrong. <laughs> He'll be fine. He'll make so many new friends. Yeah. <laughs> With his axe. And then lose so, to their face. Basically, you just throw them in. You open the door, like, give it, like, 30 seconds, open the door. You just see him just humming to himself as the zombies are kind of gnawing on his arm. He's just walking with them gnawing on his arm around the room as he swings his axe. He's not even attacking them. He's just hanging out with yeah. them. So... Uh, you said, now, you said there's a staircase going down and a staircase going up? No, no, there was the staircase going up. Sorry, there was no staircase going up. At the end of this hall, you do see the staircases that would have led you here from upstairs. You remember that broken down one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see that this is where it would have brought you on this side of the hall, but that staircase is completely destroyed. Okay, so there's only stick is going down. On the other side where you first came from. Gotcha. So before I go further down, I go back to the hole and start. Right. Make me another stealth check, just so the zombies don't notice you. Yeah, that's true. Oh, 
Thank God I'm a halfling. I want a lot of nat ones, Brian. I'm fucking scared. It's a good thing you chose to be a halfling. I know, uh, 16 plus 7. Alright, so you get past them. You get to the hole, and now you have to either call up or climb up. Uh, it's like any, like, small debris down here that I can, like, toss up. Yeah, there's plenty of, like, splinters and broken bits of wood. Uh, I start chucking a few pieces up there to try to get their attention. Alright, so you guys are sitting by the hole, you're trying to calm the boy down, and all of a sudden, clack, clack, and then something hits Piper in the side of the head, clack. Well, I'm not, I don't think I'm, I was trying to do it that far, I'm just trying to, like, <laughs> throw it up onto the, like, the ledge, like. Yeah, but you, you don't have a view, no, no. you're just kind of, you're tossing <laughs> pebbles, Romeo. Ah! I, like, just, like, rub the side of my head where I got hit, and just, like, and I, like, peek down in the hole. As a piece of wood smacks you right in the forehead. I will wait for responses first. <clears throat> I'm just like, clack, no response, <laughs> clack, no response, clack, no response, Piper's face as you release, clack, right in the face. Oh. Jill, Tor, is everything alright? Shh, shh, Like, I do, I do the motion like this and it's talking ahead. There are zombies down here in the room, <laughs> in the room to my right. So, <laughs> let's keep your voices down. Um, there's no one here, but there are stairs going further down, so if you guys can get down here quietly, that would be much appreciated. Now, question about this uh, response in the- you talking in my head. Can the responses also be telepathic? No, I would or? say- no, I would say just nod yes or no if you guys are good to go. I will relay the message to Scratch and Craig. There are some zombies down there. Zombies? We need to go- Shh. Oh, and he kind of puts his finger to his mouth like, Because that's exactly what she just did is shh. Okay. Scratch, what should we Has... do with Cardo? Well, we either take him out now. We probably should. Or we him bring out. him with us. I do not want to put him in any more danger. Exactly. I give him the candle to help you see, okay? Carl? Yes? We're going to go down, and we're going to get your sister back. Right, he's doing that, like, We've... little child, like, heavy breathing, where it's that sharp inhale. Yes. Yeah. We've checked up here. Everything is safe up here. I need you to stay here and wait for us. Do you understand? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It'll be okay. We'll find her. And we'll bring you guys back safe, okay? We got this. And I do a thumbs up. He he looks at you and Piper, and he kind of like leans into Scratch just a little bit more. That's okay. I do offer him the candle, though. He'll take it. Okay. Craig scratches his head in confusion, and then he's going to. Okay. Uh, what would Craig do? <laughs> WWKD. <laughs> Um, I... This week on WWKD. <laughs> Basically, he's going to grab the rope and kind of uh, repel himself down. Oh, this is going to go terribly. <laughs> it's either that or I jump. He's trying to be quiet, so he's going to try to soften the landing a little. All right, make an athletics check. Okay. That's a nine. All right. So you uh, begin to like pull yourself down this rope. And you hear the wood creaking, but you manage to get to the bottom without mm. it breaking. <sighs> okay. Good. As long as that I'm was not more a natural concerned one. that it didn't break. No, it wasn't a natural one. Yeah, he's just... He's light. He's a little gnome, so he's getting himself right? down. True. He's a gnome. I've been louder. You've heard me be louder. <laughs> I suppose I will try to climb down next, quietly as I can. All right, athletics check, please. 19. 19? All right, you managed to climb down, no problem. How far down is it? 10 feet. 10 feet. Okay. I feel like I can just jump down. I'm a cat. Yep, you can make an acrobatics check then. That is 19. 19. So, Piper, you get down there, you're like, ha, all of a sudden this shape just appears next to you. He just drops down silently. The pads of his paws just lightly hitting the wood 
and you are all currently on the, the second level down of the Ocean's Folly. Which way? The, well, I point where I, I, in a very low voice, we're going down that way towards the stairs. I turn around, right side, zombies. No, 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 the stairs are on the same side you're on. The stairs all the way at the end of the hallway that were, like, caved in, those are the ones that go up. You're standing in front of the stairs that go yeah, down. Yeah, I'm pointing at the stairs that go down, that's where we're going. To the right there is a room of zombies. I counted about nine in there, so... We should probably take care of them, shouldn't we? Not until we find the kid. Yeah, why? Honestly, why get ourselves in needless danger? Craig pulls out his axe. No, Craig, not yet. I'm not moving, I just say I pull out my axe. Wait a minute, I'm ignoring him. I say nothing. Nah, I look at Craig. Whoa there, calm down. Speed of Gonzalez. This is going to get us killed. My ignoring Craig is going to get us killed. Probably. Or Craig's going to get us killed. (laughs) One or the other. Is going to allow Craig to get us killed. Yeah, Craig is going to allow Craig to get us killed, or Scratch is going to allow Craig to get us killed. Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> Caution <laughs> to the wind. <laughs> Caution to the wind. <laughs> so, I start heading down the stairs. Alright, head down the stairs. Down the stairs is an open area filled with barrels of rotten food and spoiled wine and ale. There are coils of rope rusted harpoons with rotten handles, and crates full of empty glass bottles. There is one door on the opposite side of the hull, but a large hole shows the murky water of the lake seeping in a giant pool. You can hear sounds coming from the other side of the door, but you are too far away to make them out clearly. Okay. Uh, I go up to the door, I guess. As you move forward, the water begins to churn. Oh. I back away from the water. Water becomes placid again. I don't think it wants us coming near it. Um, any debris lying about? There are the... There's everything I just described. Gotcha. Is there a way to get to the door without disturbing the water? The water is a giant hole in the... The deck. And there's probably a little bit less than a five foot walkway on either side because this is like it's smashed this is not like a perfectly cut hole this is something smashed into it's probably when the ship ran aground is when this hole is made i'm gonna tie my rope against one of the hand axes all right and then i'm going to chuck it as hard as i can at the wall right across Alrighty, roll to hit, just to see if the blade catches. Okay. Straight die roll. Yep, it's well, it's an attack roll. Oh, so that's uh, it's higher than twenty. That that will stick in the wall. Uh, okay. Roll your damage. <laughs> he does know the ship is rotting, right? That's why I'm seeing if he smashes. Oh no, that's a hole me actually wall, whispering or... <laughs> to. That's me actually whispering to the Piper. <laughs> he does know that the whole I... boat is rotted, right? I mean, I think it's a matter of he doesn't always know his own strength. Oh, oh, oh! And that sound <laughs> is him. Oh. That's max damage. So that's. Oh God. So. I hope that's not the kid. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, that's an eleven. Po- hold on, that's oh. eleven points. And do I do I add my uh, because I'm a berserker? Uh, add the whole, or is that You're only raging? You're not raging, raging currently. Okay, so good. No. Good because I would be very terrified otherwise. So that's an eleven points of damage to the wall. All right, the wall had ten hit points. So. <laughs> <laughs> You throw this axe, and it just spins end over end, the rope coiling in the air, and it just smashes blade first into the wall, and goes through the wall. And you just hear, What was that? Uh, fuck. And... I swear oh I had good intentions. I didn't mean to, like, destroy it. It was God. a good plan. Oh it was a very good plan. It oh just, uh, you oh don't God. know your own strength. Hang on. I, DM has to... <laughs> this was a good plan? Hang on. He was trying to make it so that way we could basically make a rope across yeah. I mean, what without we disturbing what the water. Yeah, I mean, what we tie that rope to, though? More of the rotted boat? 
<laughs> Actually, well, given you the rope to the, to... You do it to the wall across, I'm saying, so if you throw it to the wall across, it's like a straight rope. You didn't throw it at the ceiling that we can like swing across, which still is a rotted boat. I don't trust swinging anything from this boat right now. And you just hear this piercing scream of a little girl yell, <gasps> Intruders! Oh. And Wait, what? the door slams open and you see this man in rotting clothing, a peg leg, the, the typical stereotypical pirate, except the flesh. Arr, Captain, we be reporting for duty. Yeah, that would work if the flesh weren't rotting <laughs> off his face. And the the <laughs> eye that isn't covered by an eye patch is an empty socket. And it just yells, Arr! Who be on me ship? And as he steps forward, the water explodes, and this half fish, half man creature uh, rises from the depths and just blah! As you trigger both encounters at once, roll initiative. <laughs> Great! <laughs> awesome! Cool! Oh, okay. Can they see us? Isn't it dark? They can see. Oh, they can that's see. Just Fuck, man. Terrible. Also, did he just did he just kill the girl? No, the girl screamed intruders, and that's what got, that's what also got me. <laughs> that's what also got me kind of twisted. I got an eight. Uh, Thirteen. I have a fifteen. Oh, God damn it, guys! Oh, Holy great. shit! I had the best great. intentions. Oh, you did, you did. I 20. know what you were trying to do. This is a good. Oh. This is a good night. <laughs> as as the look on Craig's face goes from. Yeah, to oh. Uh, how long is this? How long is this corridor? Uh, ship. <laughs> Brian, you are currently standing in about a twenty-five long by twenty-foot wide room. The hole in the floor takes up about fifteen by fifteen in the center, and that's where the half man, half fish thing just came out. So he's fifteen feet from me. Is what you're saying? Yeah. I can't see him then. You just heard this splash and uh, roar. So then oh. I would look at Piper. Uh, and I heard the pirate like, what was that splashing sound? Mm -hmm. Um, we have company, really big half fish, half man company. Okay. Um. Ah, yeah. Um, and I just kind of like point out roughly where it is, the big old shadow. It's worth. <laughs> I'm gonna need a torch. <laughs> Get a roll. Oh, nat 20 on that guy's initiative roll. Actually, oh, that's that's great. I'm so glad for him. Still think I so glad. But luckily, I'm sure Scratch has a higher dex than he does because his dex was zero. So Scratch. And... Yeah, I'm going first. Yeah. But let me Just finish flat getting, out the, uh, first. getting the initiative rolls in there. So there are two uh, encounters here, right? There are two encounters yes, rolled two into targets. one. They're two targets that you currently see. One's a fish. One, his torso up is man-like, except his face is very fish-like, filled with razor-sharp teeth, his fins on the side of his face and his head, and he's got claws and a trident. The lower half of his body, uh, as he splashed out of the water, it fell back in a little bit, but you can see it's almost like a shark's tail. Okay. When you say lower half of the body, where is the like transition from the hips down hips down okay. scratch you're up <laughs> claws who are you clawing fish guy or are you moving around fish guy to get at zombie guy I mean I think I'm gonna go after the guy in front of me alright so fish guy yeah alright roll to hit fish guy so let's charge forward. 11 to hit. That will miss. He brings the trident up and your claws slash against the metal. And my unarmed strike. All right. 23 to hit. That will hit. So you like slash and he parries, but your, your claws come in and rake across his face. Six damage. Six damage to him. Mm -hmm. All right. He howls and he will retaliate against you immediately because it's his turn now. So he will uh, attempt to bite your hand as it goes by, and he will roll a natural 20 again. Holy crap. 
Okay. Yeah. For 11 points of piercing damage, he just chomps onto your arm. And then attempts That's to rake at you with his Not hook. half my hit points, but it's damn close. Oof. And then he attempts to rake at you with his claws, but he rolled a natural 7, so he's not going to hit you with that one. And that brings us to... Jeltor. You can't see. You cannot see. You can move, though. Uh, yeah, move up until I can see something. So as you move forward, you're like, I know... I. I heard Scratch go this way, I heard something, and you move forward and you see Scratch, his arm just coated in blood in the mouth of this horrifying creature who's apparently dropped his trident to claw at at Scratch. And half man, half fish, just attacking half man, half cat. Okay, uh, it's a battle for the ages. Uh, I'm not sure if I do have this advantage of attack rolls. It might. I, if you can see that you can see the target. You do not have disadvantage. Okay. Well, you sure? Yeah. Gotcha. So I'm going to shoot at it now. My bow. All right. Roll the hit. Uh, 16 plus that's 21. Not that long. That'll hit. And I guess sneak attack and scratches there. Yes, you do. 14 points. 14 points of damage. As this arrow comes shooting past your face, scratch, and you see it like plunge into this creature's chest. And as it roars in agony from that, you're able to wrench your hand free from where he bit you. And I only move what? So I only move 15 five, feet. I only move yeah. Five feet. Yeah. Is there anywhere I can like duck behind? There's some barrels you can duck behind if you like. I go to hide behind some barrels. Alrighty. Make a stealth check. Of course, uh, 17. Okay. Yeah, 17. 17. Alright. Craig, you are up. Alright, I still have the rope in my hand, so I'm going to pull uh, my axe back if I can. Alright, that would be your action to do that. No, that's fine. Alright, so you wrench the axe back, tearing up some more of the uh, the rotten wood yeah. as you pull it back. Cool. Oh, I don't think I have any, so... You have bonus action rage. Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to definitely rage. <laughs> All right. So I'm frustrated with myself, and I'm so angry. <laughs> Craig makes a bigger hole in the wall, just pulling it back. And then you just see him start to shake, and his eyes bulge and go bloodshot. And Wait, he, he popped a blood vessel? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> he, he, like, he, like, popped a blood vessel while pooping raged. <laughs> <laughs> God damn! That is rage. Yep. Piper, you are up. All right, so I don't really want to get closer to fish face if I don't have to. Right. So I will take out my my short bow and I will take a shot at him. All right. Roll the hit. It's almost really good, and then I decided to roll back. Eight. Eight. The arrow goes flying and lands in the rotten wood, like right through it in the wall behind it. Oh yeah. I need to keep track of my arrows. And yes, I keep will... track of your arrows, please. Yes. Bonus action, inspire. Uh, I will inspire Scratch. Thank you. Where everybody was kung fu fighting. That cat was fast as lightning! Kick his ass. Alright, so that was Piper's turn. So the captain is going to move around. And he watched you, Craig, as you... You broke me wall! And he pulls out a rapier. And he just goes to skewer you. How? So he has to walk. Oh, he came cool. He moved in. I'm pretty yeah, okay. sure we're the assholes here. Oh, no, we are. I'm just making sure that he moved up because I'm like, <laughs> he skewers you. I'm like, I'm like 30 feet away. No, no, he he moves around the hole. He ignores Scratch and the, uh, the fish man. Okay. And he comes around and he goes to hit you and he rolls a 12. Yeah. All right. So you have your axe in hand and you knock the blade away. Mm. But that's that's his turn. He's got nothing out. Man, I'd feel really dumb if we could have just talked our way out of this. And then from around the corner, 
There is another man in very similar clothing, also zombified, wearing not as nice a nice hat. Both the hats are rotten and terrible, mm. but the captain is wearing a nicer hat. Okay. The first mate. First mate. Uh, but he can't get to anybody with his movement, so he's going to stay in the door. Okay. And that's going to bring us back to the top with Scratch, fighting off this other creature. I'm afraid you have a terrible in- infestation in here. I'll take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Scratch. 23 to hit. That will hit him. Five damage. Five damage. Offhand. 20 to hit. That will hit. Four damage. Four damage. All right. So your bloody arm now free of this thing's maw, you just slash, slash, just your claws going for it. But every time you slash into it, you're going for its vitals. It turns and you're just ripping scales off of it. You're drawing blood, but you can't get that vital kill shot in. And it's its turn. So it's going to turn around and do the same to you. Uh, So he rolls an 18 to hit you with his claws. I can't impose misdirection. I believe you can impose misdirection. I would like to. All right. What does that he do? He has disadvantage to an attack against myself or an ally. Yes. A misdirection is starting at level three. You gain the ability to misdirect your opponent's attacks. Your skills as performer allow you to make them see what isn't there, misjudge their own senses, and cause them to misread your movements. As a reaction on your turn, you can give disadvantage to an attack against yourself or an ally within five feet of you. You did not get close enough to scratch. You did not get within those five feet. Okay, in that case, I'll use body hardening. All right. And that raises your AC by... By three. So that makes so your AC. it is 19. All right, so his slash comes in, and you tighten your muscles, and the, the claws go against your, your good arm, is the first one. And as the claws rake across, no blood is drawn, and he looks, like, confused, and he goes for the second attack. And that's a natural four. So he slashes and just... The claws do nothing, and then as he goes to slash again, you relax your body and move back just enough that it whiffs right in front of you. Like deep, I'm just imagining deep breathing at this point now. <gasps> yeah. Dink. It tightens up and then relaxes. Whiss it misses. It's, it's almost Tai Chi in the way it looks. The body tightens and relaxes like water. All right, Jeltor, you're up. All right. So I attack from stealth. All right. Whom are you attacking? Fishman. Fishman? Alright, roll to hit Fishman. You have advantage. Uh, 19 plus. That'll hit Fishman. As you step out of hiding, which really shouldn't have done anything because you have. Oh no, never mind. The candles. Yep, never mind. You step out of hiding and you shoot the arrow. Roll your damage. Hit 1, 2, 6. So it's 9, plus 3, so 12. 12. Alright, he is still standing, but the arrow catches him in an eye and he just roars in agony. Back behind the barrel. Alright, roll your stealth. 50 plus 7, so it's 22. Alright, Craig, you are up and you've got a guy on you. Ah! <laughs> Can I go for his good leg? Sure. And I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna drop the hand axe because I brought it back and pull my great axe out. Alright. And then I swing! Oh, okay, that's not bad. That's a 20 on that. That will hit. Alrighty, and that's a d20. Oh, 17 points to his leg. Oh, damn. Hang on, gotta do math here. Yep. Alright, so you bring that axe in, and it just cuts through the leg. And you see, like, flesh sloth off, but no blood. Okay. You see chips of bone as this dead flesh just hits the ground and he looks at you and goes you're gonna be sorry about that one Ah! alright Piper is up I will switch to my rapier and move in to attack fish face alright roll to hit fish face natural 20 alright roll your damage against fish face that's 2d8 correct yes for 13 points of damage alright so Jeltor's arrow found one eye, your rapier finds the other, and you watch as the blade slips beautifully right into the eye and out the back of the head, 
and as the body drops, it's too heavy for you to hold on to. So your arm drops with it, and it just sloths off the side of uh, off the blade of your rapier and falls dead into the wall. This has been the Reliably Chaotic Podcast. Champions of Solane is an original Dungeons & Dragons adventure written by Brian Scharf using the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rule set published by Wizards of the Coast. My name is Brian Scharf, and I've been your DM. You can reach me at ReliableDM on Twitter. This is Jair, also known as JA, and I play the character of Jeltsua Jactus. This is Nicole Summers, and I play Piper. This is Matthew Reed, and I play Scratch. This is Andrew Brown, and I play Craig. Theme music by Adrian Von Ziegler. All other music by Kevin McLeod on the Incompetech website and Adrian Von Ziegler. Detailed information on music used in this episode is provided in its description. Music for this episode was selected by Nicole Summers, and the episode was edited by Matthew Reed. Contact us on Twitter at ReliablyChaotic, email us at reliablychaotic at gmail.com, or join our Discord server by following the link in our description. If you like us and want to support our show, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash reliablychaotic, or by leaving a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Thank you for listening, and we hope to see you again in our next adventure.